Hello, in this video I would like to talk about uh, singular value decomposition and how it can be used for recommender systems. Uh, let me quickly explain what SVD, singular value decomposition, is. Uh, in linear algebra, we know that when we have a matrix A with M rows and N columns, we can decompose it to uh, the multiplication of three matrices U and say Sigma and V right and the size of U is M by N the same size that A has and Sigma and V have uh, sizes N by N now the thing is that depending on the rank of A uh, this uh, this sigma uh, basically this sigma is diagonal matrix and uh, on the uh, diagonal we have basically singular values right and if uh, the rank uh, if, if M and N basically are not equal what happens is that rank is smaller than equal minimum of this M and M and so we will have so many zeros here basically if we truncate the matrix to uh, a value even smaller than k so this k is supposed to be the number of columns here right? and the col columns here and number of rows here if we pick k to be 2 imagine these are really large matrices and rank of a is also large if we pick k to be just 3 and 2 we can still uh, basically use the first two columns of u first two rows of v first two elements of uh, the diagonal um, on the diagonal on the diagonal of this matrix and multiply them together but what happens is that we are not going to get a we will get an approximation to a instead of estimating all of the parameters that come here we just only keep a small uh, set of the columns and the rows here and multiply them together to reconstruct whatever matrix we have in the beginning imagine we have users and movies we will have a matrix uh, here we call it X same as A and on the rows we have the uh, users and on the columns we can have the box or we can have different items movies or whatever usually uh, the number of rows is much much larger than number of columns so imagine in Amazon right how many items we have on a uh, website uh, I don't know maybe a few hundred thousands maybe a million but how about number of rows it can be billions of people at least uh, in theory you can think of it that way so usually that's the case uh, for Netflix how many movies we have how many people how many uh, customers Netflix has right so uh, what happens is that you can now use uh, uh, singular value decomposition at least the theory the concept and uh, basically uh, try to reconstruct this matrix okay so what are the values on the matrix so this can be the ratings from 1 to 5 it can be 0 1 meaning that the person has clicked on that item right or has watched half a, half an hour of it or something so these this the value can be um, whatever depending on the use case but what happens is that it's a sparse matrix meaning that there's so many null values usually people users only watch or only click or only give reviews for a few items handful of items right and while we have too many of them so many of these items are basically null and if we want to use uh, uh, you know simple methods we have to basically uh, replace zero on in their places and then now we have a matrix that doesn't have null values and then we can use elementary uh, methods and computational methods in linear algebra and calculate this u and v in scikit learn in python for example you can truncate it and use truncated svd um, and calculate this u and v uh, now how do we make a recommendation the user has watched for example a few items and now we want to recommend 
new items to that person to to review to buy uh, you know whatever to watch so uh, when we uh, basically estimate u and v and we multiply them together we basically can reconstruct the original matrix so imagine for this person that has given three reviews so there are three null values here so when we multiply them together we can estimate these values and we can basically sort them and uh, recommend the value with the largest value uh, that is as simple as that we, recon we reconstruct it and then we go back and use the uh, estimated values to make the recommendation if we want to use uh, ordinary methods computational methods in linear obje obje algebra we're gonna have so many challenges to um, to tackle one is that yeah there's so many null values even if you put them zero then you're likely to going to get small values close to zero when you uh, reconstruct the matrix uh, other challenges is that the, the matrix can be really really large and you cannot fit it into the memory if you want to have uh, the whole matrix in the memory even sometimes when you can um, save it as um, you know uh, sparse matrix not having the full matrix with so many zeros still um, your data can be large enough so that the computations become cumbersome um, yeah the composition can be uh, uh, slow even if you don't have memory issues it can take a lot of time to basically decompose and estimate that u and v matrices uh, in usual uh, supervised algorithms it's common that people use batch learning there is no batch learning you cannot basically use some of the rows here right and estimate the u and v and use another set of rows and estimate u and v it, it doesn't work uh, that way so you have to use all of the users and all of all of the rows and columns at once to be able to estimate u and v um, it's an unsupervised problem there is no um, you know minim minimizing loss again if you want to use simple um, linear, algebra, linear algebra methods no control over complexity yes so imagine you want to pick uh, the size uh, when you want to truncate it as uh, columns to be say k columns right five or ten you don't know if you're gonna overfit or not right and maybe you the recommendations that you make will not gen generalize to unseen data so yeah no uh, complex uh, no control over complexity uh, so imagine uh, in your case you have reviews right in in Amazon for example uh, also you can have data that people have clicked on the items have given review have given uh, rating uh, um, they have the items in their basket yeah so in their cart I mean so there are so many uh, different implicit interactions that the data is available and you can you cannot use uh, so you can, you can just use whatever matrix you can define and make recommendation based on that and ignore all types of uh, basically other data and information that you have in your database you cannot make use of them so these are good motivations to use alternative methods for computation we take an, uh, an iterative um, approach so we assume that this matrix is called R for rating or A whatever I'm using notation R and that uh, the rows of this matrix are called PIs I for each item sorry uh, I for each user and each Q is the columns of these matrix V so we have PI times uh, QJ so PI times QJ gives us 
the uh, cell um, the, the I and J cell of the matrix uh, rating R so we say that let's minimize this loss that I and J are those um, basically indices that we don't have missing values so the first issue that this is a sparse matrix is resolved here meaning that if if these um, items these uh, basically user item cells are null we're gonna ignore them so we're gonna go through that summation of all the indices that the rating is available and also note that we minimize uh, the error um, we estimate the values of P's and Q's that minimize the error uh, one nice intuition that you can have here is that uh, you know that when you have two uh, you know the dot product and the inner product of two vectors if the dot product is large right it means those two vectors are close to each other when they are small they are the dot product is a small meaning that those two vectors are away from each other in that space right so basically we are assuming that uh, when a vector for a user times or dot product vector of an item is as close as to the rating it means uh, so okay now if that value is large it means that person that vector and the vector of the user is close to the vector of the item if imagine so this is say from 1 to 5 if it's 5 it means the dot product uh, means it's large so that user likes that item because it has given 5 if it's 1 which is the sm smallest value that means that this uh, means that the, the dot product so the basically the algorithm will lead that will make sure that the uh, multiplication of that the vector of the user with the vector of the item is a small meaning that the vectors are away from each other meaning that the user doesn't like that item so it has also that intuition behind it um, there are so many things that you can do with this um, first of all we when we want to estimate this we start with random p's and q's so you randomly it shouldn't be zero should randomly generate randomly initiate uh, the matrices u and v and then uh, let it go through the optimization whatever uh, method you want to use for optimization right and then in each step you're gonna update the uh, the the parameters uh, in order for the whole thing uh, the whole thing becomes as close as to possible as to the, uh, to the rating matrix the number of parameters in this matrix is n by k and in this matrix is k by n we have to estimate how many parameters k times m plus n parameters parameters really complicated algorithm usually if you remember in linear regression right so we have a bunch of x values and we want to estimate the coefficients but here so many parameters we have to estimate that's that's a drawback and it become it can become really a complicated method uh, complicated basically model and overfitting can be really uh, a challenge here here are the interpretations that i already talked about so uh, the good thing is that we can control over the uh, um, the complexity right another in, um, benefit of regularization is that when we keep these values of pi's and qj's small when we multiply them together imagine q has some error in it if values of p can become large so the whole thing can become really large and away from r so always keeping the values of the vectors p and q small uh, is beneficial uh, so it not only it keeps the error 
controlled, it also keeps the complexity of the algorithm uh, controlled. This is a supervised algorithm. Rij is the outcome, and th th these guys are, say, you know, we have usually linear regression that the the outcome of the model is beta zero plus beta one times x and something, right? So we have that model, and we want to we want it to be as close as possible to the target values similarly here so the outcome of the model is is this p the, the dot product of p and q